Welcome to worship for the Sunday that we know as Father's Day and Indigenous Day of Prayer, as well as World Refugee Sunday. Much to think about and upon which to reflect and celebrations to be had. Forming part of this worship service is the video created by the Manitou Intentional Learning Community to mark the 35th anniversary of the apology made by the United Church to the Indigenous people. And it is dedicated to former moderator, Reverend Stan Mackay, and his recent contribution to milk. Let us now worship the creator, father and mother of us all. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked in this land. And their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and their spirituality. And we are gathered on the lands represented by the Robinson Huron Treaty 61 of 1850, the traditional territory of the Serpent River and Mississaugee people. <clears throat> and we acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. And let us live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. May the light of Christ illuminate that which needs looking at and be a beacon calling people to follow toward healing, reconciliation, and wholeness. Let us pray. Creator God, as people of faith, we gather to worship you this day. Some of us are quite comfortable with calling you Father. For others, doing so could be quite painful. You are a God of many names, and may we come to you calling you by the name that is most rich in meaning for us. Open our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our souls to be touched by your spirit, that we might grow in depth in the inner life and in knowledge and understanding of what matters in our journey of faith in community. Hear us as we pray. Amen. First reading is from the gospel, or sorry, from Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5, 11 to 12, 13, and 17 to 22. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with a good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. For as the heavens are high above the earth, 
so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion upon his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and on his righteousness to his children's children, to those who keep his covenant and to remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. <clears throat> and then from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 5 to 16 and 3 to 20, 13 to 27. And then John 15, 1 to 12. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. And Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. And whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And John 15, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. And just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not in abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown in the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And may God add God's blessing to the reading of God's word. Reflecting on the fathers. Father, dad, daddy, papa, pops, pa, However, we have called the one who helped to create us, the one who raised us, the one who inspired us, the one who loved us dearly. Today is a day to remember them and to celebrate them. At his funeral, the thread that was woven through the eulogy and service was love. Dad loved deeply. Dad cared deeply. He worked humbly and with dedication. And he loved the land, working it with a spade, raising a great garden from which he raised us all. His hands were large and muscular. And my grandmother referred to them as chopa, as shovels. And all who knew dad knew blessing. A father who made a positive difference in the lives of his children and grandchildren and others. 
how well we are reminded that during these past weeks that not all fathers have made a positive difference in the lives of children, in students. Survivors of Indian residential schools, their spouses, their children, grandchildren, even great-grandchildren continue to experience pain and suffering and dysfunction in many relationships. How we need to work toward right relations that many people might know healing, wholeness, and blessing. Recently, while moving boxes in the basement, I came across an old photo, 92 years old to be exact. It was a photo of the 1929 annual general meeting of the Bay of Quinte Conference of the United Church of Canada. And Winston's grandfather, William Cuthbert, was a delegate at that meeting. And someone has drawn a line with a pen and an arrow to indicate his whereabouts in that photo. And I counted them a couple of times. There's around 255 delegates, all men but six, and mostly older men. And perhaps the picture could be captioned, captioned the face of our fathers. If a picture was taken in the year 2021 of, say, our Canadian Shield Regional Council, I wonder how many delegates might be represented, how many men, women, how many older, younger, how many might be black, indigenous, or Asian, how many might be part of the LGBTQ plus community, for how many might English be the mother tongue, or French, or an indigenous language, how many might speak an African or Asian language first? How grateful am I that the United Church continues to work toward greater inclusion of all peoples? Can we safely say that the faith of our fathers has evolved, it's been transformed? As we look back at the founding fathers of this nation of Canada, we begin to look through a different lens and we see with fresh perspective. We realize now that not all of the work of our founding fathers can be held up high. Edgerton Ryerson was the one who had his hand in the founding of residential schools, as did John A. Macdonald. With new eyes for seeing, does that justify the tearing down of their statues? As fathers and mothers of this generation, we need to sift the wheat from the chaff and encourage that the writing down of history be from other perspectives so that successive generations can learn the fullness of history and understand more of our common humanity. Scripture can help us to reflect upon our relationship with the Heavenly Father. Psalm 103 reminds us that the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him and His righteousness to children's children to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Love passes through the generations. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. The gospel passage from John focuses on that close relationship between father and son, between God and Jesus. Love is the key. Obedience to God's love enables love to flow and to grow. Jesus encourages his disciples with these words, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And that abiding in love prompts joy to bubble up and joy to be manifest throughout one's life. Furthermore, Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. If we look to Jesus and how he lived and loved and cared and shared, then we will know how to love as the Father loves, steadfastly and compassionately. As we reflect upon the Father's love, may we humbly venture forth in faith, praying that the spirit of love would draw all people to God's self, and that the spirit of love would lead us to do the hard work of reconciliation and justice. And that the spirit of love would lead us toward transformation for the sake of the world, for all my relations. Amen.
In August 1986, during the 31st General Council of the United Church of Canada at Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario, a teepee was erected by First Nations delegates. Elder Alberta Billy, representing the All Native Circle Conference, courageously called the church to account for its complicity in the suffering of the people it claimed to love. On that night, after typical United Church discussion and voting, Moderator, the Right Reverend Robert Smith, sat with elders and offered words of apology on our behalf for the ways the church had contributed to the dismantling of a sacred spiritual path and the destruction of Indigenous culture. Another apology followed 12 years later, specifically for complicity in the suffering inflicted by the residential school system. As we know, Apology is hollow without a conscious repairing of relationship. So to that end, the apology was received, but not accepted as complete. This cairn was built to remember the historic act and, more importantly, the commitment to reconciliation. 35 years in, we ask, how is our walk from apology to action progressing? Let's recall those historic words that light our way. To do for you a welcome song. This song was taught to us by Maggie Paul, who is a Passamaquoddy. It was given Anishinaabe words by the late Sarah Ganawabi, who is a longtime member of our group. We are singing it to you today to welcome you to this special event. Long before my people journeyed to this land, your people were here. And you received from your elders an understanding of creation and of the mystery that surrounds us that was deep and rich and to be treasured. We did not hear you when you shared your vision. In our zeal to tell you of the good news of Jesus Christ, we were closed to the value of your spirituality. We confused Western ways and culture with the depth and breadth and length and height of the gospel of Christ. We imposed our civilization as a condition of accepting the gospel. We tried to make you be like us. And in so doing, we helped to destroy the vision that made you what you were. As a result, you and we are poorer. And the image of the creator in us is twisted, blurred, 
and we are not what we are meant to be by God. We ask you to forgive us and to walk together with us in the spirit of Christ so that our peoples may be blessed and God's creation healed. The apology was acknowledged and received with grace to be considered by the Indigenous Church before making a response. In 1988, at the 32nd General Council, the Indigenous Church acknowledged the apology, expressing its hope that the Church would live into its words. Mrs. Edith Memnook, a representative of the All Native Circus Circle Conference said, the apology made to the native people of Canada by the United Church of Canada in Sudbury in August 1986 has been a very important step forward. It is heartening to see that the United Church of Canada is a forerunner in making this apology to native people. The All Native Circle Conference has now acknowledged your apology. Our people have continued to affirm the teachings of the Native way of life. Our spiritual teachings and values have taught us to uphold the sacred fire, to be guardians of Mother Earth, and strive to maintain harmony and peaceful coexistence with all peoples. We only ask of you to respect our sacred fire, the creation, and to live in peaceful coexistence with us. We recognize the hurts and feelings will continue amongst our people, but through partnership and walking hand in hand, the Indian spirit will eventually heal. Through our love, understanding, and sincerity, the brotherhood and sisterhood of unity, strength, and respect can be achieved. The Native people of the All Native Circle Conference hope and pray that the apology is not symbolic, but that these are the words of action and sincerity. We appreciate the freedom for culture and religious expression. In the new spirit this apology has created, let us unite our hearts and minds in the wholeness of life that the Great Spirit has given us. This exchange has been at the center of our work to make right this broken relationship, to bring about healing and new life so that both parties can walk together and with God in a good way. Maxine McVeigh has been a leader for us in that endeavor, in Sudbury and beyond. She was here that night and shares the impact it has had on her life. I had the privilege of being at that 1986 General Council meeting, and I will never forget when Alberta Bailey stood up and she shared her story and called on the United Church to apologize, including for our role in residential schools. I was deeply moved by her story and the pain and anguish she experienced being taken from her family, her language, and her culture. I was horrified. My church that I loved had been had been part of an institution that had taken small children from their homes, denying them their language and their culture, leaving many parents and grandparents and whole communities sad, sad and mourning. The experience of the church's apology has flamed my passion to work for right relations, reconciliation and healing and justice for all people. I've been involved with the, with the Right Relations Committee now for about 25 years, first with Manitou Conference initially, and now as part of the team. 
for the right relations resource team for the Canadian Shell region. One of our goals over the years has been to provide education for our faith communities. Many of our faith communities are now acknowledging what First Nations territory their faith community is worshiping on. And another resource is a minute for right relations to promote understanding of our First Nations culture. I've always been grateful to Art Solomon and his helper Peter for the many hours of the labor and the laughter and the time spent building this memorial cairn. And that experience flames my love for my indigenous brothers and sisters and continues to call me to continue that journey, to find ways to walk together, to respect one another, listen and learn with and from one another. Over the years, our denomination has taken steps on our journey with our First Nations brothers and sisters, but we still have a long path ahead of us. Lisa Blair, Blair will now share some concrete actions that you, want, you may want to take both as individuals and communities of faith to help put the words of the apology into action. Miigwech. My name is Lisa Blay, and I'm a member of the Right Relations Resource Team and the Faith Formation and Outreach Minister at Trinity United Church in North Bay. I'm a Haudenosaunee woman living and working in North Bay, a city that is nestled between Lake Nipissing and Trout Lake, on lands and near waters that have sustained many Indigenous peoples from time immemorial to the present. Anishinaabe, Cree, Algonquin, Oji Cree, Métis, and in recent history, settler peoples from many different nations have called the areas in and around the Apology Cairn home. As people of the Apology, we seek to live together in peace and friendship, honoring the treaties, seeking justice, and walking together in the spirit of reconciliation. I've been asked to reflect on how we, as people of faith and people of the Apology, can put those historic words of apology into action. Here are my top five. Number one, seek out and celebrate the historic and current contributions of Indigenous peoples in your region. Artists, storytellers, knowledge keepers, athletes, leaders, and other notable people. Number two, listen and respond to the challenges that Indigenous people both on and off reserve are experiencing in your region. Number three, decolonize your relationship with Indigenous peoples. That means recognizing and valuing the knowledge and experience that Indigenous people have. Number four, become an ally and an advocate. Use your voice to uplift some of the challenges that Indigenous peoples are facing. Language, culture, land, health, all needs to be restored, both independent of and with the support of non-Indigenous people. Number five, we have already been given the framework for justice and reconciliation the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, urge our government to uphold and implement UNDRIP into law. Miawa, miigwech, merci, thank you. Now to inspire our journey, we welcome the very Reverend Jordan Cantwell. As a result, you and we are poorer and the image of the creator in us is twisted, blurred, and we are not what we are meant by God to be. This is why the work of reparations and right relationship building is essential. It is part of our healing journey, healing for settler peoples as well as Indigenous peoples. If I don't understand my own need for healing from my bondage to colonial and white supremacist attitudes, then even my best efforts at reconciliation will likely perpetuate and entrench colonial ways, not dismantle them. I must come to terms with the ways in which the image of the Creator has become twisted, blurred in me. How my participation in racist and colonial structures distorts my own humanity, as well as that of my Indigenous relatives. Once I see this truth clearly, and feel its impact on my relationship with God, myself, and my neighbors, then I will be fully invested in the transformation that needs to happen in me 
in our church, and in society. Then I won't run from the hard and humbling work of building right relations, because I'll know that this is the medicine I need to heal, to become whole. This is about my liberation and your liberation. The liberation of each and every one of us, which is all bound up together. May we have the courage and the humility to embrace our healing journey, that together we may be liberated to become what we are meant by God to be. Let us pray. Loving God, Creator, Father, we sing songs to you of how great thou art, and we find you in the stillness, in the quiet. We hear you in the singing of the birds. We sense you in the delicate aromas of garden flowers. We discover you in the words of Scripture. We are encouraged by you through the words of scripture. Loving God, you have created us with a keen mind. Sometimes our minds lead us astray. Sometimes our understanding is marred by our own arrogance. Help us always to keep an open mind, a searching mind, a hungering mind, for then we are on the pathway to self-knowledge, insight, and growth, and we in the world can be the better for it. We give you thanks for this day for the fathers, the ones that created us, the ones that raised us, the ones that inspired us, the ones that taught us and coached us, the ones that sacrificed for us that we might have a life-giving future. And this day we pray for leaders all across our land in various levels of government. May they lead wisely, compassionately, and courageously that justice might flow like a mighty river. We pray for refugees all around the world, that caring and compassionate countries would welcome them in, care for them, encourage them, and enable them to become all that they were meant to be, courageous people on the move towards brighter futures for their families and the communities in which they've chosen to live. On this Lord's Day, we lift up to you the sick, the sorrowing, the hungry, and the thirsty, the imprisoned, the searching, the lonely, the distressed. May we reach out and make a difference in the lives of those around us. Hear our prayers, O God, and in your love answer. And we pray now the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The world needs your gifts, your gift of compassion and understanding, your gift of music and exhortation, your gift of courage and conviction, your gifts of vision and vulnerability your gift of celebration and community making. And so does your church. Your church needs your gifts of time and treasure. So don't be bashful or afraid. Consider now how you can make your offerings to God. 
Accept all our gifts, O God, those tangible and intangible. Use them to transform this world into your vision of the kingdom on heaven come to earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. forward and love God, Creator, Brother Jesus, Sister Spirit. Go and love others, all who are made in the image of the divine. And reach out to others, all who are sorrowful and heavy laden. And celebrate others, all those who nurtured you well. And now may God's love heal you, hold you, and make you whole. Amen. In the spirit, let us travel, open to each other's pain. Let our loves and fears unravel, celebrate the space we gain.